Um, thank you everyone for the work you've done to put this event together. It's uh, my pleasure to be here and it's Uh, Jessica Parr recently offered an important overview of this vital and emerging area called the Black Digital Humanities. Her essay takes Kim Gallen's essay, making a case for the Black Digital Humanities as the keystone in understanding the theoretical framework for these new paths of interdisciplinary inquiry. So with this, I'm gonna to start to share the presentation. And yes, I will slow down. <laughs> um, so this work is based not just on Gallen, but also Angel David Nieves' uh, breakthrough in 2016-2017 with the National Endowment for the Humanities Office of the Digital Humanities Grant and year-long workshop. The distinguished participants included folks like Kenton Ransby and Gabrielle Foreman, but they've only begun to connect the larger theoretical framework offered. Compartir uh, lo que Arlo Anderson and Kiana Witted. Uh, these connections have produced a series of scholarly breakthroughs since 2014, culminating in the publication and distribution of a digital classroom game, Sojourner's Trail, in August of last year. This presentation will examine the evolution of the Black digital humanities from the grassroots as an interdisciplinary and intersectional collection of projects. The roots of the Black Digital Humanities for me reach back to the Afrofuturist vision of T. Thomas Fortune in the late 19th century. Fortune was the period's most militant journalist, inheriting the mantle from Frederick Douglass. Fortune mentored and guided the work of Booker T. Washington, W.E.B. Du Bois, and Ida B. Wells, Barnett, Marcus Garvey, and dozens of other leaders across the United States and African diaspora worldwide. Uh, most importantly, he backed his words with constant action and investment, basically creating organizations like the National Afro-American League and the National Negro Business League. His greatest accomplishment, in my view, was the establishment of a prosperous African-American community in Red Bank, New Jersey between 1901 and 1909. The combination of his work as a journalist, activist, and intellectual spurred the emergence of the Harlem Renaissance and the new Negro ideas popularized by Elaine Locke. In trying to replicate Fortune's success, I often use a teaching activity in my media lab class called semiosis. Semiosis is about understanding multiple kinds of cultural expression, whether it's politics, whether it's literature, whether it's painting and, and sculpture, how do we look at these expressions and see the way they impact each other in a cross-disciplinary and interdisciplinary way? And so the students in these classes for the last decade, more than that, 15 years, have played with the idea of understanding meaning of different symbols and then impact and helping that those symbols reach larger audiences so that they can then become stronger critical analysts and develop new kinds of command of the media environment that they encounter. All of this is based in the framework of Black studies that originated in the late 1960s. So in that framework, I focus particularly on the work between 1994 and 2012. Um, a young group of scholars focused on mass incarceration and other policies like welfare reform that neglected very disadvantaged communities in the United States and also around the world. In particular, I look at hip hop and the way that people in the hip hop culture embody the values of Angela Davis, Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, and Asada Shakur. They pressed hard over the last 30 years to bring the voices of Toni Morrison, Audre Lorde, James Baldwin, Kwame Ture, and Bayard Rustin into the scholarly canon and public discussion. Most powerfully, this generation of young faculty adopted new media platforms as opportunities to reach global audiences with their work. Mark Anthony Neal is the foremost example, one of the best practitioners of this technique, um, creating a generation of scholars through Duke University that have transformed academic discourse in the last decade. The products of this effort are myriad, but most notably, these faculty have broken longstanding barriers against racial equity in places like Brown University, the University of Chicago, Georgetown University, and the University of Virginia by questioning the roots of slavery and segregation in these institutions and forcing an unprecedented accountability. 
using digital tools to document these histories and challenge what we can do in the present and future. With nearly 500 tenure track faculty across the United States, this group of intellectuals has also made dramatic impact on Black Lives Matter and the Fair Fight voting initiatives that have transformed the opportunities for political expression and involvement over the last decade. Pour les gens qui, qui veulent s'exprimer et de parler de leur, de leur droit. So where does this come from in my particular work? Um, I can understand or I try to explain this pattern to my students in terms of uh, patterns of contradiction and reinforcement. Which things challenge authority? Which things reinforce the ca capacity to resist and give people greater chances of success through kind of civil rights actions, human rights actions, attempts to build autonomy? I look at Manuel Lima's concept of rhizomatic knowledge as one set of tools. Combined with Renato Anderson's presentation of the African diaspora as a center for philosophical liberation, my students of the Black Speculative Arts Movement are situated effectively to interpret both the history of innovation and its contemporary manifestations. Beyond the specifics of who collaborates and when producing what new work, the data analytics available through social media and other digital technologies enables analysts to detect subtle patterns and previously unspoken assumptions. How does Gallen speak to the institutional audiences of land-grant institutions in her essays? Why is it important that PAR reinforce this message among the elite scholarly communities of the Northern Atlantic coast? In what ways do any of these activities subvert the authority of the academy to promote more av avenues for academic excellence among all people, but especially people of African descent? This is the point at which Sojourner's Trail enters the conversation. Based on three decades of coding experience that shaped 20 years of historical analysis, the game was initially created based on the interdisciplinary resources published in the book, Cities Imagined in 2018. Cities Imagined featured evidence about the evolving nature of black architecture and urban planning within Jim Crow frameworks in the early 20th century. However, it took another step forward theoretically by challenging instructors to teach about fictional cities like Gotham or nations like Wakanda to examine assumptions about race, class, gender, sexuality, space, and place in fiction and across multimedia. The success of the Marvel Studios feature film Black Panther only underscored the power and the relevance of this research. For two full years, scholars across the, the academy have raced to consider the importance of imagination in the construction of cultural architecture. In one class that used that book, the students constructed multiple fantasy cities in an effort to imagine places unburdened by the legacies of segregation and colonialism. They actively analyzed the processes of racial and spatial liberation necessary in the 21st century. The final project in the course was the selection and the virtual rendering of historic sites of liberation based on their readings. How do they actually take literature and rhetoric and historical evidence and create the virtual spaces that we saw Professor Mina describe in Kenya in our keynote this morning? How do we do that in multiple nations? How do we do it globally? How do we explore transnational connections? They selected North American cities with significant populations of free African Americans between 1790 and 2010. They created. Oh, we have Les Américains noirs, et nous avons pu discuter leur réalité. Produced three virtual gaming experiences that connected traditional historical, literary, and media analysis with multimedia design. Over the next two years, led by my instructional technologist partner, Megan Alice, we converted the evidence that the students had put together into a coherent multi level gaming system that was available to everyone. Those initial frameworks are going to be the, the 10 level gaming experiences that you'll see in the next few minutes. And so I'll walk everyone through the game. I need to share it and change my share. So this is my basic lab at my current university. Um, a brief note, I am moving to a new institution in September at McAllister College in Minneapolis, and we'll be doing a lot of works on the Great Lakes region and the, and the Great Plains area, all the way out to the Pacific Coast. So I'm very excited for the chance to expand this work. 
But this is the Sojourners Trail link. I'll also put it in the chat for folks who want to access it and play at their own pace. And so that's the start of the game. You choose one of two characters. The students studied a lot of hip hop, as you might imagine. Choose Jean Grey. And uh, the first level of the game is uh, Savannah, Georgia. Uh, the map is taken from the 1790s. Um, but it's basically an introduction to how do you negotiate the story of African American history. Very simple template uh, made using articulate as well as the historical data of downtown Charleston in this case, or downtown Savannah. And so you click the arrows to move through the game. When you, there is one concrete path at this point, we're developing multiple options to move through the map, the map more um, with more choice. That'll probably be done in 2022, but it poses a question based on the readings from the course. Um, simple at first about, oh, <laughs> simple at first about the, uh, basic concepts, in this case, overt racism versus implicit racism. Uh, Jackie Orms, really important graphic artist, first half of the 20th century presenting African-American women in contradiction to a lot of larger social stereotypes. Um, but each level poses a question that essentially the students gave the idea but it's based in the readings and it helps to familiarize them with um, the gameplay makes them more enthusiastic actually about continuing to learn and compare what they find. Oh. We also made the addition so that when you give a wrong answer, you don't have to go back and replay the entire level. And so you get to play through 10 levels as you go through, but this was, the model for what we're doing as a 3D render using Unity 3D. And so that basic concept was a way that we could begin to use formal academic tools combined with some of my skill in immersive simulation gameplay to then bring to life multiple subjects. We can design any kind of template. It can be any city, it could be any point in time. If you want to change the questions to fit the course material that you have for your particular course, we can build out frames that are specific to your readings and assignments. Um, that was the great joy of Sojourner's Trail is that it gives one way to do what I do in terms of black speculative arts, media and history, but it's unlimited in terms of the kinds of topics you can cover. I've helped design models for math classes. I've helped design models for accounting classes. If you want to tell your content in different ways to challenge the assumptions of our fields and to kind of encourage the students to break the boundaries, that's ultimately the purpose of Sojourner's Trail is a way to look at the assumptions of elitism in higher education and actually make them collapse as it gives younger and younger students the capacity to access scholarly knowledge and challenge the questions that we generate and the bodies of evidence that we use. In this way, I really rely on Gallen and Parr and Nieves for the radical possibility of making a new canon that's actually accountable to the average citizen rather than to the highly educated, the more affluent or, or um, elite crew that typically sees the most advances. So um, I apologize for going really fast. I was a little nervous, but I am right at 15 minutes. So thank you all so much for your time. And I look forward to taking any questions and sharing these materials with everyone.